Now that was really nice. That really encouraged me then to apply a lot more pressure onto this lead armor impact, but force my hands to get more in a compressed motion here as we make contact with that golf ball. We're de-lofting the club as well, adding more compression, downward angle of attack to help us hit the ball much further with our irons. Recently, one of my students came to see me down at the golf projects for a lesson and they were really suffering with getting distance with their irons. And one main thing in particular I noticed, the reason why he was suffering with getting very little distance with his irons was just because of the strike. We were suffering with getting the club hitting the ground first and hitting way too far up on the golf ball. So hitting them way too high, getting that inconsistency in the strike, causing the inconsistency in the outcome of the shot, left shots, right shots, you name it, and golf shots going too high. So if you find that this is you in your golf game at the moment, I'd highly recommend sticking around to the very end of the video because we're gonna be talking to you today about a drill, a very simple drill that anyone can do anywhere that's going to allow them to get that ball then turf interaction, improving that angle of attack, improving the strike and seeing much more distance with their irons. So for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Harry, PJ Golf Professional down here, transforming golfers worldwide one shot at a time on Skillis. I'd highly recommend checking that out later on as well and hitting the subscribe button if you enjoy watching this one and take these tips and drills on board. So the student a couple of days ago, they were having this tendency of just swinging up to the top and then almost just leaning back and trying to shift their pressure onto this lead side of the body, but then almost tilting, early extending away from the golf ball. And you can see the position that this causes me to get into. We're shifting our sternum, so our center, our swing center, away from this golf ball here and that's going to encourage the low point, the lowest point where the club's traveling, to be well behind the golf ball. So that's why we're getting those ground then ball interactions when we're making contact at impact rather than ball then turf interactions. And we want to be finding a way that's going to allow us to get this weight shifting forward correctly, allowing his body to freely move in the golf swing. So what we noticed just to begin with was what he was doing was as he was getting to the top of the swing, he was very stiff, if you like to call it stiff or rigid in his golf swing and just leant very far back, trying his hardest to get this strike to take place. And we want this motion to take place naturally in the golf swing, especially when it comes to this downswing phase. So what we got him doing just to start off with was just taking the club out with his right hand, his trail hand like so, and just allowing this club to freely swing back and forth. And you can see there, I'm not putting any effort in really whatsoever, apart from just creating this little impulse just to get this club swinging back and forth. And once we reach that top of the swing either side, I am allowing gravity to bring that club down, feel the weight of the club coming back down and through on that through swing there. So when I try this with two hands now, just taking this club back and forth, you can see I'm not making a lot of effort whatsoever with my body for the time being. I'm just allowing this club to fall either way. And you can see there from this camera angle, when I do this, is that this club is on a nice natural arc, swinging round the body like so. I'm allowing my hands just for the time being to release when they want to release as well. I'm not forcing the hands forward like this here, otherwise that influences the strike to be the opposite, those thin shots. I'm just taking everything nice and easy, back and forth. And for those of you who really struggle with the chipping strike, I'd highly recommend just doing this motion here, back and forth like so. And we got him just hitting a couple of chip shots, just like this actually. And I've got a six iron here, so I'd recommend using like an eight or nine iron, just so you can get a little bit more loft on this, just to see the benefit really. But all I was doing was getting my student just to feel the weight of the club, bringing that club head itself back down to the ball and swinging through like so. So it's back and forth like so. So straight away, just from me doing that action there, that was a much better strike that wasn't at all ground then ball afterwards. It was very much so ball then ground afterwards. So we're getting that nice bit of compression needed for those chipping swings. But what happens now if we want to move this into a pitching swing or a full swing with those irons? So what we got my student doing then was just making this bigger swing, 
with one hand, the right hand, as a right-handed golfer, swinging back and two. And what I got him to do here, and you can see I'm already adding this little bit of turn to take place, was that we wanted to get the chest, the sternum, so the middle of the chest, just to move so it points, if I was to place the club on my sternum here and it points towards the golf ball, we just wanted that sternum to point away from the golf ball, then towards the golf ball and through on the other side. So we're going away from the golf ball to the ball and away from the golf ball to target. So just doing this little bit of extra turn, allowing this sternum to face away from the ball, towards the ball, to target, just really helped us get the feel of this motion taking place, what it should feel like in that pitching swing. Now you can see this is nice and effortless. I'm not making any effort whatsoever to try and hit the ball very far whatsoever. I'm just making sure that I am swinging freely in the golf swing. So hitting a couple of shots, we got my student doing this as well. Feet slightly narrower than a full swing. Taking it back and forth, sternum away, sternum through to target and that just helps us get this body rotation taking place as well. Moving this into full swings again, we didn't do necessarily one-handed swings all the way back and through, it's just difficult to allow the weight to fall, especially when the club reaches over your shoulder. So what we got him doing was going straight into two hands onto the club, slightly wider stance, sternum just moves and rotates further away, almost now pointing towards this camera angle here. So sternum to the camera angle there, or from where your bag would be, and then we're going sternum to target like so. So just making a couple of swings back and forth, just allowing the sternum to almost take control of this swing and everything else, the feeling is allowing that club just to do its work, like the weight of the club do its work for you. So we're swinging back and forth, sternum away, sternum to target. So that was definitely not ground then ball, that was certainly ball then turf interaction. So really nice strike there, slightly rise to the target line. That's absolutely fine for me because that's something that I've been struggling with at the moment that I'm currently working on, but that was a much better swing as opposed to feeling rigid and trying to do all the work. We've got to let the work take place. But a couple of you just from watching that part and when you try this, you will find maybe a couple of shots are ground them ball afterwards still. So here's a little extra bonus tip that I'd like you to do if this is something that you're struggling to find almost that feel of to get this strike correct, getting this strike with the ball, then turf taking place afterwards. So I'm going to introduce a training aid which is called the True Turn Pro. What this training aid does is it allows you to increase this rotation throughout your swing. And what this is going to do, of course, is because we're trying to encourage more rotation to take place in our swing, we want this feel to take place. So with this training aid here, it just allows us to really wind up into the top of our swing. All I'm doing here is the same feeling of getting my sternum to face towards that camera angle there. And I can almost feel like my hip, my right hip is rotating and twisting away from where the golf ball is positioned here. Then on the way through, the same thing. We're just getting that sternum now to face towards the target. We're getting this weight transferring correctly from trail side to lead side. We're waiting for it here, adding that little bit of pressure, which I'm gonna introduce in another video at the end screen. Then we're turning away through to finish. So that's a great training aid that you can use just to help you improve this rotation. Allow yourself to increase this rotation and stop getting too rigid in that golf swing of yours. And you can check them out on Golf Swing Systems using the discount code SURE5. I'll leave all the links below for later on. So I've just used the True Turn Pro there to really get this feel of this rotation, allowing my sternum to really free flow into the top of the backswing and then all the way through to the finished position. Same again, I'm just gonna hit another shot now after making a few turns with that training aid, just to allow me to really free flow this movement and allow the club to do the work. Very similar outcome, slightly pushed to the right again, just leaving the club face ever so slightly open there. 
And if you are leaving the club face, slightly open and pushing them now a touch to the right, that isn't necessarily a bad thing because what's taking place is that when you're allowing the club to do the work and all of a sudden you add maybe a little bit of an impulse at this movement here to start that downswing, look what that does to the club. So I'm just going to bring the club up in front and watch what this does. So we're swinging back, add that impulse, forcing those hands ahead of the club, which is great, but it also opens up the club face ever so slightly. So again, if you're someone that's suffering then with the direction you've seen this distance, I'd highly recommend taking a look at this drill here. So we want to allow the feeling of this right palm of ours to point at the target when we hit the golf ball, rather than pointing away from the target somewhere over to the right hand side. So just simply in your swing, when you swing down after just getting used to these few moves, is really encourage that right palm to face towards the target. You can see what that does to the club face there. It closes it back down so it's nice and neutral when we make contact. So I'm gonna give this a try and see what we think. So right palm at the golf ball, we're just swinging through using that sternum as normal. So up to the top. That was definitely much better, slightly closer to the target line, didn't curve off as much to the right. I'm gonna try one more, but just before I try one more, I'm going to be using another trading aid that I'd like to introduce called the Hanger. But before I introduce this next product, I'd like to give a massive shout out to GX Golf, first sponsors on the channel. They provide high quality golf clubs for a fraction of the price. I've been using these now for a month and I've been really impressed with the quality of the glove. I've not had to change them my second glove out of the three bundle pack. I highly recommend checking them out and using the discount code below, Harry10, to get yourself a whopping 10% off as well. Now the hanger, what this does is this allows us to get this feeling of this right palm facing more towards the target naturally as opposed to trying to force it to take place. So I've got this place on my six iron here and all I'm going to do is when I set up to the golf ball is I'm just gonna make sure this green part of the training aid here is just sat right in between both of my arms and not touching either side like so. Obviously it impacts though, if I was to really encourage this right palm to point towards the target impact, look what that does, that feeling of me doing this causes this green point on the training aid to touch my lead arm. This sets the wrists up to allow us to get those hands going forward, promoting that shaft lean that we want to make that solid contact, but also keep the face nice and square, as opposed to opening up like so, like we noticed earlier. So I'm just going to make a couple of practice swings, keeping this point in between my arms. Once I reach up to the top of my swing, we should feel this, green part here, just stroke the lead arm, just getting up to the top of the swing. And then we're just allowing the weight of the club to fall down and trying to get, add a little bit more pressure on this lead arm of ours from where this green point is on the training aid, the hanger. Just trying to add a bit more pressure using the hanger onto our lead arm here. And that's really going to help you get this sensation of getting that right palm to point towards the target, allow our wrist to set more forward and keeping that club face nice and square. So let's see if I can hit a shot with this now, just encouraging that feeling to take place. Now that was really nice. That really encouraged me then to apply a lot more pressure onto this lead arm at impact, but force my hands to get more in a compressed motion here as we make contact with that golf ball. We're de-lofting the club as well, adding more compression, downward angle of attack, as we mentioned at the start of the video, to help us hit the ball much further with our iron. So we're improving the strike, improving that attack angle for a much more penetrated ball flight with the irons. So you can also check this out as well on golf swing systems. I'll add this in the link in the description below if you're interested in getting yourself one of these as well. If you enjoyed this video and come this far, I'd highly recommend hitting that subscribe button so you stay tuned to all the content coming out to you every Tuesday and Friday. And be sure to check out this video over here where I talk a little bit more in detail about adding a little bit more pressure on the trail side of the body to begin that downswing to help you improve that distance even more so. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.